Good, good, good. Okay. Well, yeah, we're, we're going to kind of muscle through this, but uh, gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Rivers. He's uh, He's been doing this for, what, 10 years? I've been doing the digital for about 12 years now. Yeah. And uh, like I said, he gets invited to Google parties that I don't. He knows uh, he knows a lot about um, not only the uh, the AdWords piece of it that uh, that obviously we're we're going through piece by piece here, but um, he, um, he more or less kind of the ecosystem that a lot of black hat marketers just aren't familiar with, and and. Uh, and kind of, uh, I, I guess, back in my black hat days, uh, and it's pretty much like this today, you're paid more or less off of how many people you can get through that one checkout. And uh, so a lot of things go by the wayside. A lot of the, um, the ancillary email lists, the, uh, the, the retargeting, the, the stuff that, um, that that you get to take advantage of at, by having a white hat store, um, and uh, and so he's obviously he's he I think his agency they they probably push at one time it was what a million dollars a month through Google. Oh yeah, he's yeah. on that now twice as much. Yeah, so um, so they by buying that much data he can kind of see things on a whole different level than than we can from uh, from the individual standpoint and uh, and so I've invited here him here down on the boat and uh, what he's going to do is just more or less uh, kind of talk to you um, about the uh, the whole ecosystem of of the white hat side of things um, a lot of it I'm sure you're you're familiar with and and uh, but um, but there's there's some pieces that even surprised me, um, especially when it comes to to the the granular detail that you can go through when when uh, when kind of keeping somebody in your sphere of uh, influence here. So um, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll kind of turn it over to him, and then what we'll do is uh, at the end of it we'll jump into one of my accounts. I'll kind of show you how to set up your retargeting. With, at least with Google, um, there's still some other companies that that I'd encourage you to explore, like uh, Site Scout and um, and um, AdRoll. Ad Roll and uh, but uh, but we'll uh, we'll at least tackle the Google piece and make sure that uh, that you are capturing your your retargeting lists, and uh, and then I'll kind of show you within within uh, Google, like if you know Amazon, know anything about Amazon, you know those products kind of follow you from uh, from uh, from site to site and that can kind of show you if you're if you really want to sell one particular product how you can set that up as well so that you can kind of follow people through uh, through the the web on on that particular item. So um, anyway, without further ado, meet Rivers. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Um, what can they see here? They can see what you're looking at. We can put it. In, yeah, we can put it in presentation mode here. If, uh, and I think if you just click anywhere over here, it'll uh, it'll not do anything. Oh wait, maybe. All right, how about that? Go ahead. All right, move that button down there. Oh, uh, there we go. All right. Yeah, like you said, my name is Rivers Pierce. I've been doing um, digital in one shape or fashion since um, the early 2000s. And um, I have the distinction of pretty much always being on the white hat side. Um, worked at several agencies. I've done Legion. I've done e-commerce. I've done travel, um, news, real estate. You name it. I've, I've worked in pretty much every space. Managed uh, $500 budgets and, and $5 million budgets. So um, I've done a lot with Facebook. I've done a lot with with, with search and and now Instagram and and retargeting and email. Uh, done a lot of different stuff, and, and lately I've been thinking a lot about marketing technology and all the things that are really under the hood. Um, and Mike and I have been been kind of talking about for the past couple months. And you know, I think now in this day and age, you really have to be thinking about building an ecosystem if you're going to have a sustainable uh, business online. Whether that's doing e-com, whether that's doing lead generation, um, and that's whether or not you're doing it for yourself or for clients or um, you know for for an agency or what have you. So. Um, this is a presentation I gave a, a few months ago at a conference uh, that was on um, more of a te technology side of things. Um, so I'm going to kind of 
cruise through it. I won't, I won't bore you with all the nitty gritty details, but basically, um, you know, we're setting the story up here. Why do we need all this technology? Well, it's 2017. It's a digital world. This is, uh, this is, <laughs> this is an absolute must nowadays. And if you want something that's going to last and, uh, and you want to keep from burning through accounts and, and actually build a, a sustainable uh, business, you know, a sustainable ecosystem of clients as well, then you need to learn how to put the right pieces in place that are going to allow you to scale that and grow it over time. Um, so jumping in, I was actually just here uh, uh, two, two or three days ago in the middle of Times Square, and the reason I put this, this slide in here is to get everybody thinking about this is the world we live in. It's a, it's a virtual Times Square where we're constantly inundated with media and people vying for our attention as consumers. So you as the, the marketer, the advertiser, the business, the brand, uh, how are you supposed to break through all of this? Um, you know, it's, it's a whole different world. It's a digital world. It's a mobile world. We're always plugged in. Um, I came across some stats that basically said, you know, hey, I, I saw we had 24 hours in a day. Actually, due to multitasking and multiple devices, we're carving out 31 hours a day of activity, which again means our attention is being fragmented over multiple devices and multiple things, um, you know, at every, every corner. And uh, I came across this slide, I thought it was funny, you know, my phone died today, so I spent some time with the family, and they seem like nice people. And the reality of the world is we're always plugged in. You know, I have to pry the iPad out of my seven-year-old's hand to get her to come to the dinner table. So this is the world that we're trying to get, you know, get to. These are the consumers out there that we're trying to get to uh, actually pay attention to the products that we're selling and, and the, the, the businesses that we're promoting. So, you know, thinking about like things like that, you got to think, all right, well, what do we want? What are we ultimately doing here? And I apologize, I think the formatting is off a little bit. Uh, not too bad. We're trying to get people's attention, all right? Attention is the gateway drug. If we can get their attention, then we can hopefully get some engagement out of them. We get their engagement, we hopefully get some trust, and when they move into trusting us, then they'll give us something of value. They'll give us their money, they'll give us an email address, they'll give us something, maybe a phone number, or maybe they'll come into our store. Maybe they'll give us a review, whatever that might be, but we don't get there without getting their attention. So we've got to we got to think about how we're going to break through all of this noise and all that media out there. So um, there's a great quote by a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk, if you're familiar with him, and he's basically saying, you know, attention is in different places. I don't care if Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever exists tomorrow. I just care about where your attention is. And so ultimately, what we're getting to here is if we're thinking about building audiences and creating audience-based marketing. Um, which is really the, the natural progression beyond just trying to get a person in the door to buy something from me. It's like, okay, well, if they bought something from us, let's start building you know, a sustainable database that we can then market against and create custom audiences against and lookalikes and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, but we've got to know where our audience's attention is, and in order to do that, we have to really understand them. You know, we have to understand who they are, where they shop, what they read, what they do, uh, what websites they visit, etc. So really we've got to start thinking about how we're going to get in front of the right people at the right time. So um, I think some of the formatting on this, right, okay, so this one here. If I'm a consumer, what do I want? I want to return on the attention that I'm giving you. And so it's up to you, it's incumbent on you to make sure that the products that you're selling, that the, the, the position that you're putting yourself in the marketplace, the, the websites that you have, that they're, they're giving value, whether that's products, whether that's information, you know, whatever that might be, that, that me as the consumer, that I'm getting a return on the intention that I'm giving you. And, the, and in, in doing so, you will get a return on the investment that you're putting out there and the products you're selling and the, the businesses that you're promoting. So these are really just kind of teeing up where we're ultimately getting to here. Um, formatting's bad here. We're just going to skip this. <laughs> attention leads to loyalty and trust. That's what we're getting to. So. I really want you guys to think about it like this. I thought this was a great way to think about things. This is a guy from Facebook. He said, what if we link people's trust as a non-renewable resource? So if we're talk talking about an ecosystem, it's a nice metaphor that you know you really, really only get one chance to, to get them in the door and, and start earning that trust because there's just too many other things vying for their attention. So if we start thinking about it from that perspective, we start thinking about our websites are going to be better, our content's going to be better, you know, our marketing, our front-end marketing, and that whole experience is going to be better that ultimately we get their attention, we engage them, and we, we, we treat them as, uh, you know, as, as important people that we we're, we're, you know, want to engage and do business with. So that being said, 
think about it like this. This is a jungle, right? This is your ecosystem. When you're when you're up in the hills and you're looking down, you see this one green lush lush thing. But um, as you get further further down, what do you realize? You've got the canopy, and then you get through, and you've got the leaves and the trees, and you get down, and you've got the soil, and you've got microorganisms, and, and you've got all these things working together for one purpose. What is an ecosystem's goal? It's it's to sustain itself, to stay alive. In order to do so, it has to adapt. You know, it has to change. And and Darwin says. It's not the strongest of the species, nor the most intelligent, who survive. It's the, the, the those that are most willing and able and responsive to change. So we have to be responsive to change in, in this day and age, especially. But what I'm getting at here is, once you get below this the top level, you know, when you're out there on the web or you're, you're looking at something, uh, an advertising piece, and you think, "Oh, I'm going to do that." Well, what you're seeing is actually the finished product of a whole bunch of other things that are going on under the hood. The right targeting, the right message, the right um, uh, imagery, the video, whatever that might be, and even underneath the hood of that is the actual right um, attitude towards who that person is, knowing how to speak their language, knowing what websites they're visiting, know when to target them, what devices, and what channels. Uh, so you've got to start thinking about all of that element, and then below that, even okay, well, what are the products? What are the types of technology that can allow me to build this thing? You know, your landing pages, your databases, your analytics. Front-end advertising and marketing tools. You know what are the various things, even down to your design tools. What is your ecosystem? What are, what are those products and, and your your marketing technology stack going to look like? So you got to start thinking about getting underneath the hood here. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we're going to build this ecosystem. So we're going to breeze through here. Marketing technology. I'm, I'm used to talking to people that aren't too savvy with marketing and, and marketing technology, at, at least in a conference like this where I was. But it's impossible to do this without MarTech these days. You can't just go out there and expect to make it happen. You've got to understand the technology underneath the hood. Um, just to, to brace yourselves, the reality of the landscape is, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but there's a guy named Scott Brinker who puts together the marketing technology landscape. This is the one he put out last year in March. And there were, there's over 3,500 different vendors on here across the whole um, landscape, I guess, if you will, where you've got everything from advertising, promotion, content, social, e-com, data, and into the actual operations and management piece of this. Now, I'm not saying you need to be doing all of this by any stretch. Um, you do what's right for your business and for your, your clients and your customers and the end consumer, but the bottom line is there are certain things that you just have to be thinking about. And, and I think there's a quote, oh, let me just say one more thing here. This is a growing business, so this isn't going anywhere. The marketing technology is getting more vast and more complicated uh, by the year. But I think what's important to point out here is that this is uh, this is a long quote, but really the bottom one is what we're we're talking about here is that this isn't something that people are just doing because they think it's fun and it's cool. It's because this is developing to the com this has been developed in response to the complexity that exists out there in ad tech and marketing and ultimately in a response to our more complicated mobile always on plugged in you know consumer society consumers are, are the ones that are that are calling the shots um, and you need to be able to respond to them again developed in response responsive to that change so now that we're we're a little overwhelmed by how much technology is out there we gotta think about where are we gonna start what are we gonna do to actually to, <laughs> Start building. That's, I mean, I, I I hadn't seen that slide before, and I'm just I, I like I don't know about anyone else on here, but I I just uh, I got a little uh, I I mean just to kind of slow it down a little bit, I I got a little uh, overwhelmed. I mean, I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad this is the next slide because yeah. uh, we'll take a breather. Because honestly, like I mean, to make it in this day and age, it's. Uh, there is a lot more to it, and uh, and we've got to be better, smarter than than whoever is our whoever's our competition, and yeah. uh, um, and so I mean, just kind of in the state that we're all at right now, this is uh, this is kind of I mean, this is why I wanted Rivers to talk. I mean, just to kind of break all this down and and kind of explain. Um, I mean, everyone's getting better out there, and yep. uh, and and we've we've got to. We've got to be at least in the top 25% of what we're yeah. doing to, to make it. So. And if you're going to compete with the brands, the big brands, this is what they're doing. Um, but I think I've got some stats at the end. You'll see that a lot of those smaller players don't are not doing this. And they're not doing it. If they are, they're not doing it well. Um, you know, so it's not 
hard to win. You just got to learn it. And, and, and I'm not saying you need to be a marketing technologist either. You can easily find somebody to help you with those pieces, you know, to do what you do best. I know you don't want me to build your website. Like, that's just not what I do. But I can market your website. So it's knowing your strengths and your weaknesses and, and putting the right people in place around you. So now, where do we start now that we're, we're, we're overwhelmed by how much tech is out there? Well, we're going to ask questions. We're going to ask ourselves the right questions that are going to help us build the right ecosystem. We're going to build the right foundation. And in doing so, we're going to put ourselves in the right frame of mind that's going to allow us to put this together and ultimately then build something on top of it that we can scale and actually hit the right consumers at the right time and place. So before we get started, the number one thing you cannot do when you're thinking about how to build the right technology stack or the right ecosystem is have shiny object syndrome. Now my, uh, my, um, my metaphor for this, I guess, is this car. This is a beautiful car. It's, it's a car that I would love to have. Um, but if I got shiny object syndrome, bought this car, brought it home to my wife, we might have some issues because I'm thinking about how I'm going to get a return on this car. I don't know if you know that, you know, Mike, Mike lives out at Isle of Palms. I live out here with him. We live at the beach. I've got two kids, two dogs, um, between soccer and the beach and dogs and all that. This car actually is a really poor investment for my family, right? I'm not going to get a lot of return out of this car. It doesn't make sense for me. So I'm letting, I'm like letting the, the cart lead the horse here. I've got to think about what makes the most sense for my family, probably an SUV or something, right? That's what we've got to be thinking about. So if you let the technology lead by saying, well, I've got to use Salesforce or I've got to use some other, you know, I've got to use Infusionsoft or, or whatever that might be, um, you know, or a big PPC management solution like Kenshu or something like that, well, you might not be ready for that. It might not make sense for your business. And if you build your strategy around a piece of technology that isn't right for your business, then you may get to the end of the line and say, well, wait, this is going to cost me $100,000 and I'm already in debt. You know, So it's like you got to be thinking about the right piece of technology for your business. It doesn't start with letting the technology lead. So just because it's cool and shiny and does cool things doesn't mean it's right for you or your customers or your business, at least at this time. So just keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to take a more agnostic approach to how we're going to build this system. So, again, the tools are the thing at the end. You've got to get your head in the right spot. You've got to understand the customer experience. You don't start with the tools. Those exist in the end. So we've got to ask ourselves a series of questions, like I said. We're going to have four questions that are going to be our, our non-technical questions. are going to help us lay the foundation for not only who we are, but who our customers are and how we're going to speak to them. So, number one. What's my unique value proposition? You guys have maybe talked through some of this, you know, understanding what is it, ultimately, what are you selling? Why should I do business with you? Is it cheaper? Is it better? Is it better, faster shipping? Is it quality? Uh, whatever that might be. So you've got to understand the products you're selling or, or the services you're promoting, um, you know, in, in, in whatever capacity that might be. And ultimately, you're just answering that question, why, why should I spend my time, energy, or money with you uh, versus someone else? If you don't know this, you really this you don't have a strong foundation. After this, now you're digging in who are your customers and where are you going to find them. So you know, understanding what you're selling, and if you're selling you know uh, children's toys, then you know you're probably not going to be marketing to. Uh, well, I guess you would be marketing to parents, but <laughs> but you know, it's like um, I always think about if you if you're selling at least in the, the line of work I'm in right now, which is real estate. If you're selling second home. Uh, you know, million dollar mansions in South Florida, you're probably not going to market the first time home buyers that are, you know, with a 520 credit score. You've got to understand who your customers are and then understand where they're hanging out. You know, if you're marketing to 60 year olds, then <clears throat> maybe Snapchat isn't your best channel, right? Ultimately, a lot of people are on Google when you're doing e com. It's a little different than when you're doing lead generation, but ultimately, you've got to get in your customer's head and develop those personas or, or avatars, as Mike calls them. Um, you know, who are those ideal people and, and where are they hanging out online? After that, how are you going to define success? You don't know if it's working if you don't have goals. I know you guys have probably been working through some of this stuff. You've got to understand, you know, every at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of that month, did it work? Did you put your time, your energy, and money in the right places? So you've got to understand what those goals are. Is it sales? Is it traffic? Is it eyeballs to your site? Um, is, it, is it, you know, um, lead generation or p getting people in the door of a store or, or a restaurant, reservations, whatever that might be. Understanding your goals, top priority. 
And then finally, you know, you got to understand how much do you have to spend because that's ultimately going to drive what's coming next, right? So if you've only got a thousand bucks a month to spend, well, that's that's a different strategy than if you have a hundred thousand dollars a month. So um, you got to understand where you need to be lean, and uh, and when you don't. But if you don't understand your budget, um, it's very easy to uh, to get things out of whack very quickly. So moving on, anything, Mike? You want to add on that that piece? No, the, no, the I think pieces? yeah, no, I think those those are all things that uh, um, I mean. Just from an audience standpoint, I think we're we might not necessarily do it all the time, yeah. and uh, that's probably why um, we've, we've got some campaigns that haven't made it. Um, and uh, I, ultimately, it's it's just um, but coming kind of coming full, full circle and and uh, and addressing those things and making sure that we are um, attacking something that. Uh, that we we know like a, a, a customer base that we know is yeah. is, uh, is is pertinent. So yeah, a customer base that you know and understand is going to be a lot more qualified than just spray and pray type of advertising. Um, so bringing in the right people is going to have a higher propensity to convert. So when you understand these things, you can really start to optimize your campaigns even before you get started. It's going to help you build it out better. It's going to help you optimize it better down the road. So. As we're thinking through that, we got to think. All right, now we've got to define what our tech stack is going to look like. So we're going to be obviously, what's going to be the hub of my business online? Ninety-nine percent of the time, this is going to be a website. It's pretty straight and forward. It's 2017, right? It's going to be a store. Better be mobile friendly. You know, it's a mobile world. Um, but that's not to say that strategic landing pages and um, social media pages, you know, your Facebook business page, Instagram, things like that. Um, so when you say the hub, you know that I'd like to think of that as your as your website, but also it's kind of like the hubs, you know, the the, the general places where your brand will be found online and and is going to be the receiving end of traffic. Then you're going to have to understand how are you going to get people in the door. Remember, we've got to get their attention before we can get any uh, engagement and loyalty and trust and business out of them. So how are we going to bring them in the door? This is going to be through search and social and um, you know. Uh, Blogging or content marketing, referrals, you know, affiliates, whatever that might be, um, could be offline. Could be TV, radio, print. Could be standing on the corner with a, a sign. Whatever it might be, it's, it's just how are you going to get people in the door for the right thing for your business? In this case, obviously, we're talking about search. We're talking about um, you know, ecom. Um, we're going to be thinking about AdWords primarily. But in the bigger picture, as you're going to build and scale your business, you got to think about how you how you find more people to get them in the door and at more Potentially effective prices. After that, where are you going to send them? Well, that's again coming back to what are your hubs online? Um, is it going to your home page? Well, not if it's necessarily a really deep, you know, product search. It should go to a product page. Um, should it go to a landing page? Should it go into social media or back to your business page? Or say if you're focusing on Facebook, those are just the kind of things that strategically sending everybody to a generic location is not your best. Um, your best route for conversion. You got to think about those places downstream that are going to, as I like to say, the path of least resistance. You want to eliminate any of those hurdles that are going to keep them from at least giving you an email address. Uh, but ultimately, you want to get that sale. But it, you know, getting that email address with the sale is is ideal. So after this, what are you going to do to engage them, to educate them, to convert them? Um, that's going to be different for whatever you're selling. You know and you know, or if you've got a, a, a maybe a more complicated product, then you should probably have some videos explaining it. Um, if you've got some, they need to be educated on. If it's uh, if it's something that's not that complicated, then you know, what is that engagement factor? What is it? Is it just the price? You know, like showing a coupon or whatever that might be. Ultimately, you've got to move them into that conversion frame of mind. Um, but you've got to understand that before you start building this stuff out. Next, now we're getting into how we're going to build our audiences. So where am I going to store all of this information? Uh, I can't just, you know, have it sitting out there, you know, when somebody converts. You know, you've got to think about that. Where, is it, where are you going to store it? Because ultimately, once you're storing information, the goal here is not just to how, warehouse it. You've got to do something with it. What am I going to do with all of this information? Well, in order to do that, you've got to understand you've got to have some sort of database tool and ultimately, you've got to have some sort of um, marketing automation suite, email, text, phone, whatever that might be, um, for building these audiences, for re-engaging them, for creating remarketing lists, 
uh, for creating engaged email co conversations and things like that. Um, if you know who you are and you know who your customers are, then you, you have a much better uh, head start on what you're going to actually do with that information once you get it. But you've got to have a place, a way to get it in the door, to warehouse it, and then ultimately to do something with it. And uh, a lot of times these systems today, it's not just a database, but it'll be a, a full suite of a, a CRM is what you're looking for, a customer relationship management suite. It's going to have marketing automation, you know, automated drips and triggers and things like that. Um, it can get complicated, but it doesn't have to be. So just um, keep that in mind. You can keep it simple and still be very effective. Um, after this, now we're thinking, now that we're building these audiences and we're, we're building a sustainable ecosystem of people that are coming back in the door, how are we going to retain them? How are we going to actually create people that are maybe giving us reviews and, and fans and spreading the word about our businesses and the products that we're selling? Uh, ultimately, that's who's going to bring the best customers back in the door. And uh, maybe you're giving these people you know, ambassador or affiliate relationships. Maybe you're giving them coupons. Uh, doesn't really matter. You're doing something that's helping them um, spread the word about you and keep coming back. Ultimately, once we uh, figure this out, how we know it's working and what's not? Well, that's going to be um, based on our goals, right? We're going to have to have some sort of analytics in place that are going to help us track and map out our goals. And uh, so we ultimately know what's working, and, and then ultimately we've got our budget in place. It's going to tell us whether we're seeing a positive ROI on it. And then finally, who's going to make all this happen? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be a team? Um, that's up to you. Depends on your budget, again, and what your skill set is. You know, like I said, my skill set is not, not designed, so that's not what I do. So um, now that we're really overwhelmed, uh, we're going to take a deep breath, breathe, breathe in. Um, I don't know if we're going to take questions now or just keep going or... No, I, I think, uh, I mean, that, uh, yeah, I guess we kind of feel out there. Samuel, do you want to? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Let's see if these guys, um, they are saying, keep rolling, Craig. Okay. Let's keep rolling. Maybe at the end we can, we can do like a, sure. a, a Q&A. Perfect. Right, so all right, now, th now that we've mapped all these questions out, we've got an idea of, of who we are, what our value prop is, what our budget is, what our goals are. We understand the types of marketing that we're going to be doing. We understand who our clients want to be, who our customers are, what kind of clients we want to have. Uh, ultimately, we've got to figure out how we put this together. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a tech agnostic blueprint. What does it mean by that? Again, we have not mentioned one piece of tech specific brand that we're going to actually put into place yet because we're just thinking about the types of technology we're going to need and then once we figure that out we've got the blueprint in place then we're going to say alright well what makes the most sense for what I'm looking for and my budget what technology makes the most sense so what we're going to do and forgive my design skills this is not what like I said what I do but I I'm, we'll see how it goes and, and we might lose some, uh, some, some formatting issues here when we move this over to PowerPoint but um, the modern marketing ecosystem this is basically I'm going to map out in a blueprint format the questions we just went through. So, what's going to be the hub of my business? This is going to be website, landing pages, content, offers, whatever that might be, the places that, that we're going to send people into. How are we going to get them? How are we going to attract them? Well, we're going to get their attention from display marketing, TV, radio, print, PR, events, paid search, social, organic, whatever that might be. In this case, you know, I know you guys have been talking a lot about AdWords. You're going to have your strategic AdWords accounts, your campaigns, you know, the right keywords in place. They're going to capture that attention um, that exists in the marketplace. But when you're thinking about remarketing, retargeting, and building audiences, you know, you're also creating some of that demand. So it's not just capturing it like you do in search. When you're thinking about, you know, how you're going to actually engage people and re-engage people, uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. But um, in this case, we're actually just capturing and, and hopefully creating some fresh attention that's going to bring them ultimately in the door to our website where we're going to engage them, we're going to educate them, ultimately move them into that trust zone where they will give us something so we can capture information and we ultimately convert them into customers. Um, this is great. That's, that's awesome, right? So we've got business coming in the door. We've at least got email addresses. We're building something here. Uh, but we've got to do some of this. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to dump it down into some sort of CRM, some sort of place that's going to warehouse all of the, our customer data, name, email, phone, etc., the, the types of products and, and pages they visit, etc. 
Um, and then ultimately we're going to have to have some sort of database and analytics, uh, some sort of intelligence and maybe even tag management, especially if you're running a lot of various um, channels beyond search and, and social. Um, it, it's a lot easier to build out those with tag manager solution. Um, so you're not messing, you know, yucking up your page with a bunch of code on the back end. Um, so ultimately we're going to dump all of this CRM information down into our database, uh, which is fantastic because now we're, we're, we're actually bringing people in the door, we're converting them, we're getting sales, we're getting emails, we're, we're, we're warehousing them into an intelligent place, but we're not really closing that loop. We're not building an ecosystem here. This is still very one, one directional. Um, so ultimately we've got to now bring in all of our front end data, all of our on-site data into our database as well so that we can start thinking about how this whole thing works together. Um, but ultimately still we're not really painting the big picture here. What we're doing here is we're still kind of just working through that I'm just chasing after those people that are buying now kind of phase. Ultimately when we build a bigger database we can actually start to think about how do we get more repeat customers you know that we don't have to keep paying for to get back in the door. So what are we going to do that? We've got to nurture We've got to learn about them, we've got to optimize this, and ultimately we've got to nurture and retain the people that are coming in the door. Um, that's going to be through email and remarketing. It could be direct mail, social media, newsletters, whatever that might be. You're using incentives. Um, but it's always easier to keep somebody that you've, you've already purchased than to get somebody new. Um, so once we can do that, now we actually close the full circle and we're dumping everything into our database uh, and, and we've got a full circle of an ecosystem here that's actually delivering on itself. And so what you can find from, from building these audiences and, and creating a larger database over time, that database then goes back up into the front end of the attention and attraction phase and is informing that you're getting better people in the door through, through custom audiences and similar audiences and lookalikes and things like that through search and through social so that you're bringing more qualified people in the door over time which ultimately increases your conversion rate and in doing so, you're going to lower your CPCs, you're going to lower your, your uh, cost per lead, you're going to lower your, your uh, or increase your ROI, all of these things play together. So, um, you know, that's basically the ecosystem, pardon my design, but to be frank, I actually put this together on my porch one night on a whiteboard. It's the same basic thing. I tried to make it look a little bit more pretty the way I did it on the, on the slide. But you can also do it in a spreadsheet. It's the same exact information, just thinking about it in a different way. Um, whatever works for you, if it's on a napkin, whatever it might be, whatever makes sense for you, is, that you're building out, uh, that's fine. Just thinking about it without letting the technology lead, letting the types of technology drive the conversation that's right for your business. So, uh, once you're done here, though, you can just start plugging and playing. Say, look. Well, what's going to be my, my main traffic channel? All right, that's AdWords. That's what I'm using. Okay, do I need anything else? All right, no. Well, what do I need? Well, what, what's my word? Uh, my my website going to be? Is it WordPress? Is it a custom built thing that you know somebody else did for you? Um, are you going to use Shopify? Are you going to you know use a plugin like WooCommerce and a WordPress site? Um, and you start thinking, say, okay, well, what's my analytics suite going to be? Well, I'm saving some money. Is it going to be Google Analytics, or am I going to go with something more high high powered like Adobe or 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 something like that. Um, that's basically where you start actually putting the technology into place and the brands that you know. So um, that's where it can get tough because some of the technology you may love may not work with something else you want to use. Uh, in that case you, you need to start thinking about well do I need to start thinking about APIs and tying things together and this is when you're building something that really has a sustainable um, you know you've got a sustainable business going on when you start thinking about those kinds of decisions but you don't have to be spending a hundred thousand dollars in technology to do that. It's not. It's all fairly accessible nowadays. Beyond that, though, really, what, let's break it down. It's a complicated world, but really, the, what are the five things you actually really need to do this right, um, and to do it at least for a small business level? You need a website. It better be mobile friendly. It better be optimized for mobile. It better be fast. Um, you're going to need. <laughs> Some sort of CRM, pardon the format in there. <laughs> Some sort of place to hold this information and to market, you know, people uh, to have their information. You're going to need email and marketing automation on top of that. From there, you're going to need social media, and I say, not necessarily paid social media, but social media can be a way to market to people without needing a whole bunch of budget. Um, you can at least have engaged audiences, and then beyond that, <laughs> you need analytics under there. I apologize again for the for the formatting here. Um, 
but you need some sort of way to understand if it's working. So you're going to need your website, a CRM, email, and or marketing automation suite, you know, some sort of social media, and some sort of analytics. When you're doing e-com, you're going to need search. Like that's the other piece of this. So this is tailored for you guys. You absolutely need to have some search and probably some paid social advertising in there as well to bring people in the door, especially if you don't have an audience. When you do have an audience, then you can, you can manipulate that a little bit better. So um, this isn't really necessary for you guys, but if you're building a team, your biggest adoption, your biggest challenge is going to get people to adopt a new way of doing things. Um, but if you're thinking about your next hire, um, again, this is this is tailored more towards a, a marketing audience, I guess. But these are the things you got to be thinking about if you're building out a team, and if you're doing this on your own, um, you still got to be thinking about a good bit of this stuff. And what you can do and what you can't do. So who's gonna who's gonna write the stuff? Who's gonna design the the assets and the videos? Who's gonna build the website? Who's gonna run your search and your social, your display, and your remarketing? Who's gonna build your email, you know, and and your nurture campaigns and analyze the data and ultimately some sort of technologist to tie all this stuff together? If you're gonna compete at scale with the big boys, this is how they're doing it, and this is what you need to be thinking about. So a few points to close with. The majority of small businesses, fewer than 52% are using fewer than three digital marketing properties or platform, and that's including their website and social media. So again, you don't have to be doing everything to beat half of the people out there. Because I've talked about five things you should be doing, and most people are only using three. And then again, about half of small business owners say they don't, know, they don't even know if their marketing efforts are effective. Well, that's like throwing money out the window. I look at them and say, well, just give me your money then. If you don't know if it's working, then... Uh, I'll take it. We'll make it work. We'll make it work for our own efforts here, right? If you know your goals and you've got analytics and tracking in place, you're going to know what's working. Yeah, and that's, I mean, obviously if you guys ever decide to to run any traffic for anyone, I mean, this is this is why that market's so wide open. Yeah. Um, because they don't have a damn clue. They and don't have a clue. I mean, I, uh, I, mean, I run AdWords for uh, for for Fifth Third Bank and and uh, um, it, it, I mean even on the big levels I mean yep. sometimes they they those guys are so caught up in what they've been doing that they they don't really necessarily know what's what's out there working so yeah no I see it all the time I do audits for people all the time with that are like you said even big boys I'm like I can't believe you're still you're actually doing business and spending this kind of money you have no idea if it's tracking or what's working you can make. You can make somebody think you're a god. Yeah. <laughs> they think you're a rock star just by basic best practices. Yeah, I, I had a uh, I had a bank um, that uh, contacted me last Friday. Um, I, I'm not. It wasn't a, a fuck yes moment where I think I want to take the take the job, but um, but they uh, they've obviously kind of got word through the grapevine of of uh, some of the banks that I've helped out and. Um, they um it was just amazing just how little i mean this this bank funds billions of dollars a year and uh i mean just a lot of the basic stuff i mean they did have a website it wasn't any like they weren't trying to capture any information and and uh um and so for that reason i mean i mean it still might very well be a, a good opportunity but this, these are all things that uh that yes, I'm I'm like looking at these guys saying, okay, well you could be doing all this, this, and this, and then I turn around and look at my own website. And I'm like, well, fuck, Mike, you should be doing this, this, and this too. <laughs> like, like the own my own advice of of things that I'm trying to tell people to do. Like uh, the I make people site. Like we definitely need to have a a uh, email generator uh, mm -hmm. generator on there that's that's giving people five percent off their purchase before they even look at the product. You know, like. There's uh, we need to entice people to, to part with that email address and and uh, um, and and I know I mean God I, I mean I know what you guys are going through each and every day I mean there's never any shortage of things to do um, on the marketing side mm. and, and that's that's I mean that's one of the reasons why I don't like taking on clients like like banks anymore because but before you know it that you're all your time's being zapped trying to get their uh, <laughs> their their platform yeah because it, it never ends I mean it never it, ends. those guys will, will so it's um so it it's something that uh, that 
that I, I mean, I, I know what you guys are going through, but in this day and age, um, the thing that is not overwhelming is the fact that you, you, you sit down, you, you spend an hour and a half doing it, it's done. You never have to touch that autoresponder again. I mean, maybe you got to make a few tweaks to the copy because you get smarter and, and better at, at being a copy uh, copywriter. Um, maybe there's a few things that you'd like to add on it, but for the most part, when you set up your uh, your display uh, retargeting ads, these are things that are done that you don't have to necessarily go back and tweak all that often. Right. And uh, and I think something that I struggle with is just getting off my ass and doing it in the first place. So. Yeah, I would say I'll add doing it right the first time is a real bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to cut corners. But every time you cut you cut enough corners off, then you're just going into in a circle. So you know, doing it right the first time, like you said, you build the right audiences, you build the right funnels, you build the right right um, paths that you want people to take. Yeah, you tweak them a little bit here and there, but when you get the pipes right the first time, it's like building a house. You can always repaint it and change it a little bit, but the infrastructure underneath, if that's right. It'll keep delivering and building for you. Yeah. So the point is, is and I, I mean, I, I I'm just as uh, guilty of it too. Is, is I mean, just having a little bit of discipline and spending the two hours that it takes to get your autoresponder set up right. Yeah. Spending the two hours to uh, um, to get your uh, your your remarketing set up right and uh, and. And just uh, kind of, I mean, hell, even if it takes you three hours to get it right, it's still over the long haul. That's a uh, that's a worthy investment. Yeah. And and what we're doing now is instead of paying, I mean, because quite honestly, between bounce rate and uh, and and all these other things, I mean, your click probably costs right around five dollars if you don't have a well optimized site. I mean, by the time you put all this stuff in into the into the mix. So, I mean, the fact that we can get that now between email marketing and remarketing and all these other things, if we can get that now to $2.50 per, uh, per click, then, I mean, you saved a shit ton of money. So, um, so I, I, I think, uh, and, and all of a sudden, you're, uh, our, uh, our ads are working better. Our products are selling. We're, we're getting some conversions. And, and, uh, and instead of just trying to fill that, that, Huge funnel. I mean, obviously, the more traffic that we try to buy, the more traffic that uh, the more it's going to cost. And and inherently, it's uh, um, I don't know. We just need a better better net these days. Yeah, I think that's a good point. When I was talking about this last week with a bunch of people, that you can't always just keep building a bigger funnel. Ultimately, you're going to run out of sources. You're going to run out of people. So you've got to start thinking about all those people that are coming in the door and the you know the ninety percent of them that are not transacting with you. Uh, get something from them. Get something from another twenty percent of them. Get an email address from another twenty thirty percent of them if you can. Um, and then you get you know twenty thirty percent of them to convert the next time they come back with an offer. And and ultimately as you build that database, you're going to get smarter. Your marketing is going to get smarter, more effective, and more efficient, so that your optimization efforts. Um, are focused a little bit better, and that's where you're saying you start trimming the fat off of that that um, cost per click or cost per lead, and start increasing the ROI from there. But that's it. That's all I had on here. Um, I think. Wait, maybe there's one more slide. Oh yeah, this is actually a great one to end on. That most people are are investing in more awareness activities. This was last year. Then they are in conversion efforts and landing page tools and email marketing. So if you if you or only focus on getting your face out there, or only focus on getting the brand out there, or getting that real high top of the funnel type of traffic, and you're not focused on those landing pages and those, like he said, autoresponders and and simple click, you know, calls to action and, and clickbait and things like that on your downstream website and landing pages. Uh, ultimately, you're not going to get as much business as you could be if you focus in on conversion rate optimization. And I don't know if you guys have talked about like split testing and and multivariate and those kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we can do it in, when we're in click funnels. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess inherently we can do it, and in, in, uh, we just have to create different products yeah. within Shopify to split test. But, um, I mean, we could duplicate it and make some changes. Yeah. But, uh, you got to understand yeah. what, what elements are going to convert better than others. Right. If you focus on conversion rate optimization, it's going to go all 
a lot longer than trying to get five cents off your CPC. You know, if you can right. increase your conversion rate by five percent, that's an exponential difference than shaving a few cents off the front end click. So, you know, just putting it all into perspective, knowing who you are, knowing who your clients are, who your your customers are. Um, it's going to allow you to inform every piece of what you're doing from the top of the funnel all the way down to the conversion point and then all of those retention and, and remarketing efforts after the, the conversion. Any questions on this stuff, guys? Let's see, let's see. Should I, uh, should I unmute them? Yeah, go for it. It's only yep. two guys, right? Yep. Let's see. Craig? Hello, hello. Hello? Yes. Go ahead, Craig. Uh, no questions, just uh, that's a lot of, a lot of information <laughs> to take in, having never seen it before. <laughs> We can always do a follow up if you want. Yeah, no, it's it's tough not to be overwhelmed, and and uh, but I, I'd say like I, I'd like everyone on the call to just kind of take a look at. Um, I mean, and I'm going to do it with with the I make people site. I'm going to take a look at uh, at each of these things, and maybe we don't go for the kill right away. You know, maybe we uh, we take a look for, and uh, and maybe our our goal. Is uh, is get email addresses and yeah. uh, um, I mean inherently we're going to sell some stuff, especially if we're offering a little bit of a discount for that. But um, but creating a a in a business that's that's going to be time tested. And uh, I mean you guys join this group and you join this this mastermind for uh, to to create something that's going to stand the test of time and isn't going to go by the wayside every time. Uh, um, Google cranks down on on uh, on phony uh, AdWords accounts, yeah. um, and uh, so and this very well can do that. And um, and I think uh, yeah, I, I don't want to kind of just keep hearing myself talk, but uh, but yeah, I think I'll add like this is supposed to. I I built this presentation to kind of overwhelm people a little bit. It's supposed to get you thinking about how complex it can be and the various things that need to be in place. Um, but you kind of work through that, you get down, you boil it down, look, there's a basic few things that you need to put in, um, the elements that are going to allow you to, to build those lists and build those audiences and, uh, and ultimately understand how to market back to them and, and, and build something that's going to last over time. So, um, okay. I mean, hell, we didn't even get into to, uh, <laughs> to Audience insights and and uh, <laughs> right. and and uh, the demographic look-alike audiences right. and and all that stuff and that's and that's just another way to find find more customers but um, but yeah I, I think uh, I mean how we can upload that list of of uh, email addresses into Google into uh, Facebook and um, and inherently it's I mean that and we can do it into Google now. Yeah, they'll take it too and oh, build right. similar audiences off of it and everything as well. Yeah, so it's uh, it. Uh, I think the key that that I'm kind of discovering as well um, is is the fact that um, we just let's not even worry about conversions at first. You know, like when we first meet somebody through our website. Um, I mean, I want them to, to get a 5% discount for, for dropping their email address. I want them to get another 5% discount to, uh, to share with their friends, share whatever product they're looking at with, uh, with their friends on, online, because when their friends come in, they click, and we're, we're continuing to build that audience. And uh, I think if we do a better job of encapsulating that, that click, then the conversions are going to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Good idea. So, um, so yeah. Let, let me, um, and I won't. I, I want to. Obviously, it's going on nine o'clock now, and I want to be sensitive to you guys. And try to make these right at an hour, but uh, 
Um, if, uh, if you guys are willing and able and, and not, um, let me just kind of jump into uh, my AdWords. So if you guys have set up your uh, your audiences right within analytics and linked your Google account, and you should get something that, that looks like this. And um, let me just tell you that you can spend a shit ton of time in in this this. Uh, um, piece of it and I really really encourage you guys to do that this is a place that um, like I said spend the two to three hours to kind of go through all of this and uh, and and look at it and, and figure out kind of what your your uh, what what you're digesting because you're going to learn a lot about your customer and um, what I'll do is I don't I mean I mean, you can you can see their ages. You can see the, the. I mean, this just tells you who they are to the nth degree. I mean, you can use these sites for uh, for display marketing. Um, the, uh, the. I mean, you can see what part. Obviously, let's see. I think this breaks it down more than that. But. I guess what I want to show you, um, and feel free to jump in here, Rivers. Yeah. But what I, I guess what I want to kind of show you is is just how to set up a, uh, um, an ad here, and uh, and just have because Google more or less will help you build the ad for you. Like it'll 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 scrape your site, pull in images. Um, you can type in whatever copy you want. The ads to look like. Um, so let me just kind of go back. And, and again, I I don't set this up very often because uh, um, because it, it it just keeps going, you know. Like it doesn't. Uh, so it's it's after, actually been a while since I've been in here um, to to set up an ad. Uh, and, and while he's doing that, I'll 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 add in that. You can build lists off of people that visit specific pieces of the website, specific pages. You can build lists off of people that make it to the shopping cart but never see the thank you page. So those are the yeah, people that you want to there for You know, you want to hit with um, with a with a discount. You know, you made it almost there. Come back and finish your order. We'll give you ten percent off. Um, those cart abandoners are, are are deadly. So you need to bring them back in the door. They almost made it. All right, all right. So um, so yeah. So if you guys have your uh, your your ads, your account set up right. You can go into um, oh, where was it? Audience definitions, audiences. Was it under link configuration and uh, all users? Dynamic attributes. Maybe this is what. Go to build an audience. Go, it's back up under audiences if you want to build a custom one here. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Sorry. So just go to create a new audience there. There we go. Okay. And then you can drop that. Yep. That's your account. Yep. Right there. Next step. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So um, we can do all users. Where Where can I see the um, where you can split it up. So if you go to create new, there we go. This is where you can just do <laughs> yeah. anything basically. So you can uh, like if you want to see where they. Um, I mean, obviously you can target your demographics here, but um, data per session um, behavior here. Behavior. Okay, where where can I? Uh, Oh, if you want, if say for example on the, on the I Make People website, they hit um, maybe that hoodie that we have. We can set that up so that the remarketing on just that hoodie is popping up in their browser, and um, 
And this is where you put the, the tag for that. So you put tag. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's Chrome uh, e-commerce. Here we go. If, uh, if folks have um, have bought within a certain time period, you can uh, you can include all of this on there. So um, this, is, this will be the ad content here. You can also do it under conditions here where it's going to have your. Um, yeah, this is beefed up since the last yeah, time I looked at it. Yeah, it's gotten pretty strong. Um, but you can do it from URLs. You can do it time and date. You can do it by browser. You can do it by pages, products. If you got your product feeds coming in here. Yeah. Um, and Facebook, you can do it by very, very specific URLs. Sky's the limit once you get into here. Dude, I, yeah. I mean, this is this is tons more powerful than than uh, than the last time I was in here. But the bottom line is, you you can get as granular as you want, or you can keep it as high level as you want. But you still need to be building on the people that are coming in the door through cookies and through email. Yeah. Well, obviously, I, I need to go back and revamp a lot of my uh, my. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly, this is probably why the stop the store stopped performing as well. You know, like it's a uh, something that I mean, the market forces us to be better, and um, and if we're not, then then shit stops performing and I honestly I, I, I mean let me be the example here this is what happens when you stop paying attention to this shit so I mean you could just click that and it's going to bring you up here it's, you're going to be able to set up your ad so um, you can set it as a target CPA I recommend um, setting up as a manual CPC uh, you can set whatever budget you want um, so I mean Start off with twenty bucks if you want. Um, if you're targeting, um, let's say, nursing hoodie, um, you put whatever landing page. So this is where you put in your nursing hoodies URL. Um, obviously, this is a completely different site, so um, I'm not going to do that. But um, uh, let's just go ahead and just to use it as an example. So when you set this up, is this just targeting it, targeting them when they're online? So what the retargeting does, yeah. So if they um, Google's got a huge display network that, that I mean. People, through AdSense? Yeah, people from AdSense, exactly. So, um, so when uh, when they're cruising around the web, um, these sites are making money from from people clicking on on uh, AdSense. So they're going to serve your ad to um, to get them back to your site to make the purchase. Yeah. So it's going to probably go through the double click network. All right, double click. Where, yeah, where exactly does that serve on? Okay. 85% of the web, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much everything. Like What's the double click network? It's, it's AdSense double click. Double click is going to be more of the um, display based network um, that Google purchased. They, they purchased that a few years back. I mean, that's where, if you're running pure display advertising through double click, um, it's a whole different interface, but. Um, you can do a lot of it through AdWords, but you're getting access through the AdWords network. You're getting access like 80 plus percent of the web, if not more than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I see them coming. I see the traffic coming in through through double click a lot, and and I guess my question's been like, okay, well, what exactly is double click? I don't yeah. think I've ever researched it. I I just I, I see it coming in, and and um, it's a. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's. Uh, um, so what they're doing is they're they're serving up your ad to get right back to uh, to what they looked at on your site, and uh, and hopefully create a uh, a transaction there. Um, so you don't have to do this with all the products. Um, I just recommend you do them with the one with your uh, with the ones that that I mean you're using to try to generate traffic. Um, I mean 
there, we've all got products on here. I mean, there's a lot of products on here that, that we wouldn't do this with just because we know for a fact, like this, for example, we know it doesn't work when we're driving traffic to it. Um, however, Craig got a sale on, on this. So uh, we want to capture and send people right back to this when they're looking around. And uh, uh, maybe it wasn't right for them to buy at that point. Maybe they were on their... their uh, um, on their iPhone and uh, they were at work and they realized that they needed a more portable um, a portable unit but uh, but they fully intend on buying one when they get back so they did a good Google search found it um, and then uh, and then later that night they came home and, and realized okay well what was that company or uh, or maybe they weren't ready to buy yet so making sure your ad is appearing in front of them, um, again, and like, oh yeah, that was the company, or that's what I was looking at. Um, I mean, that's that's where you're going to get your your crossover conversions and and uh, and stuff like that. So, so hello. Yep, yep. You here? Yes. Nope. Okay. Let me mute Silver, are you are you there? Let me mute him. Craig. Hello guys. Hey. Hello guys. Uh, Hi man. Doing all right? Yes. Uh, how long does it take to view all the all the funnels? I'm sorry, how long does it take for what? The how long does it take to, learn, to build all the funnel, to create the funnel? Uh, <laughs> well, to build the audience. To build the audience. I mean, the uh, the audience is being well. Once you you mean like the physical time it takes to set up the 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 proper pieces. Mm. Um, or how long does it take to build enough people to remarket to? Mm, not. <laughs> No, no, the the funnel, the all the marketing, the yeah, unit. yeah. I mean, your first time, and and again, I've I've got to go back and revisit a lot of this too. But the first time, I'd I'd encourage you to spend two or three hours just looking at the stuff, and um, and obviously it's uh, I can uh, I can create an updated video and put it up on the on the the uh, um, on the place as well. Maybe maybe get some shortcuts in there, but. Uh, um, I mean, guys, I'm in the same boat. Like, I've got to go back and uh, and and revisit a lot of this because, I mean, it's changed. I mean, I I think I set up this this uh, remarketing campaign two and a half years ago, which is a, a lifetime, and uh, and and uh, on the web. So, uh, so yeah, I I think, uh, but once you set it up, you're good until things change again. <laughs> you know, like. Um, it's uh, it's it's something that um, yeah. I mean, it it'll take two or three hours to set set up your remarketing. It's going to take another two to three hours to set up your email campaign. Um, I'll post videos of both of those of of me doing the exact same thing that I'm asking you to do, and uh, and then uh, um, maybe they won't be two or three, but I'll I'll give you kind of the highlights of of uh, of what I did. And, um, and yeah, I mean that's uh, that's the the gist of it. So six hours later, you've you've got your funnel more or less pretty well built for at least capturing a lot of those clicks that uh, that just clicked on your website and then clicked off. Yeah, it mm -hmm. keeps on giving. Wow, awesome! <laughs> wow. And I, I would say the last piece on that is it gives you the insights, like you were showing the audience insights you get out of it, and especially in, in the Facebook side as well. It just informs your marketing on the, on the front side even more. You understand who your customers are, who the people that abandon the cart are, male, female, ages, browsers, devices. It gives you a lot more insight into, uh, into how you run your marketing on the front end. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, what what type of remarketing is more effective, Facebook remarketing or Google remarketing? Uh, doing both, 
Yeah. People, you you want to gravitate to where your your customers are. You do both remarketing. Yeah. Facebook remarketing is pretty easy as well. I'll uh, I'll yeah. post another video on that. Um, and uh, it's um, yeah, you want to hit them both. Because what you want is you want to stay in front of that customer when they're actually ready to buy. I'd say a lot of your clicks right now are not people that have their credit card in hand. Some of them are, and we're going to get a few conversions like that. But, uh, I mean, think about it. When, when you get on the web and you start browsing around, how often is it that you're browsing around with the intent to buy? Uh, interesting. I mean, mm -hmm. well, <laughs> basically. So, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's the gist of it, guys, and and. Um, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna set up a lot of this stuff on my end and I'm gonna go through the highlights on on uh, on what I'm doing and um, and then I'll post those up and you guys I, I ask that you guys do the same and um, and we we, uh, we up the game here. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome guys. <laughs> Wow. All right. Well, if uh, any more questions? All right now. Cool. Yep. All right. Uh, well, go ahead. Well, yeah. No. Thank you guys for uh, for joining us this evening. And um, and if uh, if you need anything, you know how to get a hold of me. I. Uh, I can throw. I don't know. Do you want me to throw your your Skype address or anything on yeah, there? Yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. and uh, if you if you guys need us, just uh, just hit me up. Thanks for uh, coming on, Rivers. Hey, thank you for Thanks. listening. I'm here if you need me. He'll share my contact information out. Thank you so much for your time and sharing such a amount of pieces of gold. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, take care and uh, hey guys, and, and talk to you soon in, in the group chat then. Alright, thanks. Okay. Bye bye Mike. Bye bye. Thank you guys. Yeah.